Hey everyone, welcome back to the series. Today I wanted to talk about a pretty crucial element that a lot of modern 5A players use and especially incorporate into their freestyles. This is an element that was actually developed long ago in the history of 5A, but has maintained itself as really a staple of 5A play throughout all the years into the modern era. This concept is called the red windmill, or you can also call it the red pinwheel, either way works, and was developed by Rafael Red Matsunaga out of Brazil. The foundations of this trick revolve around a trick that's called the windmill or pinwheel. And there's actually a lot of resources already online and a lot of different videos that teach this trick really well. So I'm not really going to delve too deep into just doing a basic windmill because there's already so many resources that really explain that pretty well. This trick is a really flashy looking trick, so if you're looking for something that will really just wow the audience, this is a really good thing to add to your trick arsenal. Enough talking though, let's take a look at what the trick looks like. So before we start learning this trick, there are a couple things that will help us when we're actually learning. Step number one, make sure you have a really wide area of space. Uh, my space here in my apartment's a little bit limited, but I'm trying to make do. But ideally, you want to have like a really big spread of space all around you. Next thing I recommend, if you are practicing over a hard surface and you really don't want to damage your nice shiny metal yo-yo, I would recommend getting rid of this thing and picking up a plastic yo-yo that you don't really care as much about. Because this trick, I can guarantee you're going to be dropping a lot of yo-yos over and over and over again. So having a plastic yo-yo that you don't really care about as much, definitely something good for learning this trick. And finally, when learning this trick, it's actually helpful to have a dead yo-yo. You don't actually need a spinning yo-yo to practice this trick. You can have the yo-yo just hanging down and dead, not spinning at all. Just the yo-yo, string, and the counterweight. So with that said, let's get started with the first step. So with regular pinwheel, you've already kind of learned how to have that pulling motion uh, with your throw hand to propel the counterweight over the top of your finger. With red windmill, this same kind of principle is actually involved, but it's a little bit different. Something to keep in mind is that very sensitive kind of pulling and weight feeling that you get with the normal pinwheel. You're getting that kind of sense of the yo-yo falling, and as the yo-yo's falling a little bit, you're pulling the counterweight. So it's kind of a motion that allows you to come up with the pull and then start to fall. And then gravity does the rest and lets the counterweight fall into your hand. In this case, what we really want to focus on is that feeling of the yo-yo right as it comes over the top of our finger and we feel it falling. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to counteract that motion by as soon as we feel the yo-yo falling, we want to kind of pull up so that the yo-yo can use its momentum to pull itself back over and the counterweight can have some momentum as well to pull itself back over your pointer finger as well. So what we're looking for is that point where the yo-yo comes over and watch what happens to my free hand. As soon as the yo-yo comes over, I'm going to lift my free hand up. And then that's going to cause the yo-yo to have the counterweight momentum and the yo-yo momentum and carry it back over the top of my finger. So what's going to happen is you're going to start noticing kind of a certain feeling on your free hand. And really what it is, is you're just kind of matching the force when the yo-yo is going down and pulling up at the same time. And it's a really light feeling, and a common misconception is that you have to be moving your hand in like a big dramatic circle, when really it's more of an up and down motion. You can use a little bit of a circle motion to kind of aid it, but for the most part, you really just gotta focus on having this sort of up and down motion with your free hand pointer finger. So we've already kinda of got the feel a little bit, so now we're gonna try adding another repetition off of that initial pull. Always make sure that you're keeping your free hand pointer pretty close to the yo-yo. If you start this trick too far down towards the counterweight or even towards the middle, it's not going to work because you're going to have the counterweight side spinning too fast. You really want to keep everything as close to the yo-yo as possible 
so that the counterweight moves a little slower and the yo-yo can have an easier time flipping over your pointer finger. And from here, it's really just a game of practicing doing more repetitions. So, like I said, mentioned before, you can just have a dead yo-yo and you can just practice seeing how many you can get. So at first, you know, just practice getting like maybe three. And then when you feel confident just being able to do like three, you can start trying to add a fourth. And really, at a certain time, you're gonna start noticing this motion and it's gonna feel pretty natural. You're just kind of doing this light pulling motion up, 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 and so on. Note that this can be a really frustrating trick to get, so don't worry if it's taking you a while and you find yourself dropping the yo-yo a lot, because it really just takes tons of muscle memory to be able to figure out that point where you're lifting your finger up, giving that very slight circular motion, and really getting this trick to just repeat over and over again. Now when I was learning this trick back when I was still in school, I actually used to practice with a set of keys on a lanyard. Uh, and what I would do is I would just kind of like, you know, if I was waiting for the bus, I would just kind of practice that. Of course, once you get really good at this trick of the dead yo-yo, you can start switching to a spinning yo-yo and really focus on keeping that plane intact so that you can keep this trick going. Also practice how to stop the trick. Usually what I do is I'll just stall the yo-yo after one repetition over my pointer and I'll actually put my middle finger in the way so that the yo-yo and the string can rest and the counterweight can go into the gap of the yo-yo and I catch it in an undermount. For an extra challenge, you can also practice being able to switch the red windmill over onto your throw hand. This takes a little bit of practice and it's a little bit tricky, but you'll start to be able to notice where exactly that point of connection is and you can transfer the windmill over to your throw hand. And like I mentioned before, this trick can be really frustrating to learn and really it just comes down to practicing a lot, even in just your free time, trying to like get that feel, get that motion down and it's gonna be a little while before you get it, but once you do, it'll click and you can find yourself just doing it without even thinking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and once again, thank you for all your support. I really appreciate all the views, all the comments, and all the likes. As always, best of luck with this trick. I know that you guys can get it, and definitely leave a comment below if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Josh E. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.